I sat because there was so much confusion out there. There were so many misconceptions, and that's what we have Dr. Gerber here today to help debunk all those myths. Um, and before we get going, I just want to say a little disclaimer. I am not a doctor, and although Dr. Gerber is, we are not giving medical recommendations or advice. We're definitely getting there. Um, okay. So since everybody can hear and you're all good on yeah. that end, I, I guess I'll just keep okay, going. Right? Yes, we're good. Okay. Okay. So I'm we glad can I start over. No, we're out there. That's okay. We, we're <laughs> we're going to get to the good stuff. So um, this is the question. So as you know, as a practicing physician, what are some of the things that you're seeing today that you did not see when you first started um, in relation to you know how the current food environment is and you know, what is out there as far as, I guess, the typical standard American diet? Yeah, sure, Jennifer. Well, look, um, I started a long time ago, almost 20 years ago, and um, I'm just going to kind of repeat that uh, patients had come to me back then and um, family members, and I had lost some weight myself, 40 pounds relatively uh, easily, and then started reading about metabolic syndrome. And at that point, I realized that the metabolic syndrome and hormonal dysregulation was, was really tied to chronic disease that we see in, um, in medicine. And so from that point, my focus has really been on bringing prevention through nutrition into what we do every day as a family doctor. And back then, I was somewhat by myself. There was this guy, Stephen Finney, Eric Westman. Uh, Gary Todd's wasn't even around right. and social media and the internet was just kind of beginning to happen. And uh, slowly but surely I began to reach out on social media and to make the long story short, it's now exploded and, and boomed into this um, incredible uh, grassroots movement that's really backed by science. And so what has really changed in 20 years is that, we have more and more science to really support this approach to nutrition where um, we're addressing low carb diets, higher in fat diets, whole food diets that ultimately address hormonal dysregulation. And of course, when you look back at the traditional guidelines that go back a half century um, and it really ties in with cardiovascular disease. I mean, it was the heart associations, the Framingham study that really, um, was the, were the founders of this low fat, low calorie yes. diet to, to lower cholesterol. And, and really, I think over the years that's changing. And there are some common themes such as cutting out um, sugar, processed food, perhaps grains, uh, cleaning up the diet. And so I, I, I like to find some common grounds. And those are some areas where there's agreement, there's still a lot of disagreement. And we're going to continue to forge forward. Right. I agree with you as far as finding common grounds. Um, and, and there definitely are certain things because there, people can follow a low carb diet. And if they're uncomfortable adding animal fats and things like that, you can easily do it without adding animal fats. You can, you know, use the um, olives, olive, olive oil, avocados and things like that. If you're, if you're truly still uncomfortable. But, you know, the fact is, you're right, the research is out there. And that's what I love about social social media, excuse me. And that's where I first found Ivor Cummins, because I think that's what we have in common when you saw the cholesterol conundrum, because that's where I first saw him. And I was fascinated because I'm like, this guy is incredible. He's explaining all of this. And I dug more and more. And that's, you know, so, how I wound up, you know, starting all this. Um, and was able to connect to Dr. Westman uh, at a keto conference down here. I'm in Florida um, at West Palm a while back. So there are, there are practitioners out there. And that, for me, is great, great news. Um, well, can I just say that's, you know, meeting Ivor has been wonderful. So we're this uh, doctor engineer team. And um, we, we met um, back in 2014. Face-to-face, -face, we've gone to... Um, the, um, the low carb summit in Cape Town, South Africa with Tim Noakes. And that's where the uh, whole idea of this uh, book started. We, we, had, we were joking, let's collaborate. 
And so we both had a common interest in cardiovascular health. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone loves Irish, Irish ways and Irish accent. So he, he's more of the social media guy. And I'm kind of the power behind the throne is, is how I joke. And I'm busy seeing patients in the office. But really what we put together in this book is actually the clinical, the practical, and the science. Yeah. So, yeah, Eat Rich, Live Long. I'm very proud of uh, that book. And, um, and also the Chef Ryan, who contributed a lot of great recipes. In oh, Chef Ryan Turner was unbelievable. Yeah. Gave us a lot of great recipes. Um, okay, so we're, how about one more question, then I want to go into the myths. So if you were to say the number one concern or question you get from people looking to go on a low carb diet or keto diet, what's the, um, you know, what's the number one concern? The number one concern has always been heart health. Right. That th there's this, this fear that uh, this high fat diet will make your heart explode. You'll have a heart attack and you, and you drop dead. And, you know, we've, you know, unfortunately the, the heart associations, and this goes all the way back to Ansel Keys. Yeah. Are the kids behaving? Yeah, my husband, who's off today, oh, and a physician, he's, but he's walking around. Yeah, he just is going in and out. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so it dates back to Ansel Keys and the heart associations. Again, driving these these guidelines for supposed health that in order to live a long life, you want to do everything you can to lower LDL cholesterol that they call this bad cholesterol. And this became the eye on the prize and the singular focus. But coincidentally, they said, well, look, if you, re if you re reduce um, energy dense saturated fat in the diet, you're going to, you know, have a calorie deficit and you're going to lose weight while you're protecting your heart. But if you actually look back at the evidence over the past half century, it's really flawed. It's problematic. A lot of it is just um, epidemiology based, meaning that they go out in the field and they just kind of observe things that are happening. And, and what, you, what you come up with are weak associations. And that doesn't prove causality. And yet that has been the, the, the main thrust for this approach to um, the low carb or the, the low fat, low fat. Um, approach. And so now we have evidence. Right. Really, if you if you actually start digging and looking back at the evidence from the past fifty years, as well as new studies, RCTs, and and also epidemiology, you can see where um, there were mistakes made and and that there are really benefits of uh, addressing the low carb and and the metabolic uh, approach. Absolutely, and you know I don't know as far as epidemiology, I don't know about you, but when I you know if you've ever filled out a survey. Even the census. I mean, sometimes I don't even remember what I ate for dinner the night before, you know? So having to say, how many times a week do you eat X? It's really a challenge. And, and not only that, with Ansel Keys, when he went over there to, you know, and to all the different countries, um, some of the fat that was substituted was actually margarine. So not the butter. There's so many variables. Exactly. It's so, been so hard to control all these things. And look, even if you want to compare a low carb to a low fat diet, you're still faced with these same uh, issues. But fortunately, with advancements in research, we now have better tools to actually accurately record the, the food logs. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to the fun part. So uh, I've got a couple of like true or false myth things that you can elaborate on, but people out there watching, we've got a, we've got a good group of viewers. If you guys can throw out the answers before Dr. Gerber does, then maybe you'll get a prize. <laughs> okay. Um, myth or fact, a calorie is a calorie. doesn't matter where they come from. So I have um, chat on, I don't know if I can, Oh, it's because it's on. Oh, there's Doc uh, Ryan's on. It's on Facebook Live, the Facebook Live part. Oh, I'm not going to go look for it. I'll look. I'm here. I can. I can. Um, okay. Well, look. This, my answer might throw you off, but I'm going to say it's a fact. 
Okay. Your calorie is a calorie. Okay. How about <laughs> all calories are metabolized the same? Doesn't matter. Well, just just to answer the question you asked, and um, I have some slides. So, oh, as I mentioned, yes, Jennifer, we'll, we'll see if this works. But um, I just spent last month traveling from coast to coast, and I gave this talk at uh, Keto Fest and Low Carb San Diego, two great conferences, by the way. And so the topic is when weight loss st stalls. So let's see if I can switch to um, screen share. Okay. And then, you know, Dr. Gerber, if you guys are ever going to be at Low Carb USA Keto Getaway, which they hold in West Palm, let me know because I'm driving distance from there. So Yeah, let's do it. So is okay. that working? Yeah. Okay. So... Are all calories the same? So that comes from um, the first law of thermodynamics, that a calorie is a calorie. And that's true in a bomb calorimeter, right? So calories in equals calorie out. So here you have a bomb calorimeter. And it's a really cool thing that they, they, f they figured out many years ago that you put um, um, a, a substance in the bomb, bomb calorimeter and you ignite it. Some organic matter, and it it it, it explodes. It, it it flames up, and uh, you measure calories. And so we we determine that you know fat has nine kcal per gram, and carbohydrate has four kcal per gram. And it is true that fat calories are more energy dense. But so you see, that's in a bomb calorimeter, right? Mm -hmm. And a calorie is a calorie. Now, we got more interesting and we developed these, um, um, the cellular respiration that we measure in these bod pods, right? So we started to put people in there and then we started to measure um, oxygen in, carbon dioxide going out, water rising temperature. We start to exercise people. And lo and behold, we realized that different things are now happening with the energy that the body's now processing the energy. And so that's what you were alluding to mm -hmm. that metabolism doesn't really care about calories in and calories out. What it really cares about is processing energy calories in equals calories out, but that's not what, what is important. And so just one more slide here to show. So this idea that calories in equals calories out, that's true in a bomb calorimeter but it's the processing of energy that becomes most interesting in the body. And so what I like to do is call this energy in versus energy out and to realize that we're now processing that energy. The body is doing different things with the different macronutrients that come in. We can also partition the energy. The energy can be stored or it can be used. And then there's feedback. I worked a, long time on learning how to do these animations, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was just really marveling at that because I need to Yeah, well, yeah, I, actually, um, Dr. Yeah. Ben Bickman, he, he's, he's, a man, he's a professor. He teaches at the university, so he gave me some tips on making these slides pop. So feedback is um, the body's way of self-regulating. And right. so um, um, hormones, appetite control, this is uh, the feedback signal. And so it's really energy processing that we're interested in. And in this context, we don't really care about calories in, calories out. We, what we care about is um, how the body energies, uh, processes the energy. Right. So it's what they're doing with the calories, basically. Um... Right. For, out, for you guys out there watching that are so, just, you know, so I guess the more complicated population. answer is that, yes, um, the law of thermodynamics applies in all systems, but in, in the body, we're processing energy, and that's what we're more interested in, in, in knowing about. And you could say, well, in terms of how the body processes energy, metabolism, all calories are managed or processed differently. Okay, Dr. Gerber, we have, they can't see the slides. Ugh. 
Um, so we are screen sharing, but what I can do. I went back to my picture. Okay, the one picture. Um, okay, so we are screen sharing, and then I will share a couple of the slides. If you would send them over, you know, the, the screenshots with the group, because after I'm going to go in and edit and send everything out. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just send you the entire Yeah, PowerPoint. that's great. Okay. Okay. So, true or false, it's unsafe or not safe to follow a low carb or keto diet, I hate that word, but um, long term. A, uh, the high carb diet is much better for you. High carb, low fat. So, yeah, so th that's just not true. <laughs> and so that's problematic. Again, if you, we've been uh, following the advice from the heart associations, from um, the, the um, government agencies, to eat a, um, a low fat, low calorie diet. And during the last half century, we see diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and chronic disease on the rise. And so what I've come to understand in the last 20 years is that we are actually approaching those conditions for which the guidelines have failed. Yeah. And we, we have example after example, although I don't do research in my office, um, I have I have clinical vignettes. You could call them anecdotes, but but patient after patient, um, I have diabetics. I have potential heart patients. I have heart patients that we prevented um, heart disease ev events. We've literally reversed diabetes, helped people maintain ideal body weight right. through um, this whole foods based approach. Yeah. Right. Anecdotal stories. Uh, look. My husband's a physician, and he did it himself. He was a typical, you know, he had not overweight. He had a few extra pounds on him, but the, the low HDL, the, you know, hot, the insulin resistance, and, and that, you know, he did that, cut the triglycerides in half. So even just doing biohacking yourself, but for him as a physician, yeah. and now right. he does so recommend, you know, to his his patients. Yeah, it's sad that, that this is how we, we learn about nutrition. Right. And it's also like, you know, the general public, their experience that, um, you know, they go to the healthcare professional and they don't understand um, diet, diets in general. They, they provide a, uh, just traditional advice. But it's our goal through the conferences, through offering educational credits and other vehicles that um, we will um, teach healthcare professionals. Right. And, um, breaking through, it's breaking through because you'll get a, yeah. I get, and I'm sure you encounter, I don't know if you encounter this because as a physician, when a patient comes to you and you'll say, hey, this, you know, low carb, high, uh, I mean, high fat diet, this is what I'm recommending. But even so, someone who comes to me will say, but we've been taught so long, the American Heart Association, you know, tells us this and that. And, and I just say, look, the research is out there. So it, it, that is one uh, issue that I have is breaking breaking those barriers but okay just so, sharing the science absolutely exactly here's the here's this here's the research so i know you're so busy i don't want to i don't want to keep you so we're going to keep going all right um keto is the same as the atkins diet right uh yes and no right <laughs> i'm always what's I'm the always difference in the middle. what's the difference so um i like to think of um ketogenesis or ketogenic diet, it really defines a physiologic process. And specifically, we're trying to, to burn body fat mm -hmm. and burn it rapidly. So we have fat loss, and we lose weight. And so the way that happens is all the cells of our body can utilize fat stores, triglyceride is breaking down into the free fatty acids and glycerol. And through a process known as beta oxidation, we, we cleave the fatty acids that eventually makes its way into the Krebs cycle, the mitochondria, and we use that for energy. Now, in a state where fat oxidation is happening rapidly, such as low glucose, low insulin, a ketogenic diet, or even fasting, the liver produces ketones in the body. And so ultimately, we're looking for ketones is a measurement that we're we're um we're burning body fat right 
and there's different ways to get there. Yeah. And I, I often like to just clarify to people that um, you can externally eat as much fat as you want. And there's a point at which the quantity of the food, the energy does, does matter. And so often confusing to people and they don't quite understand that is that you can actually gain fat mass without insulin. Insulin isn't the only hormone at play here. So there's GLUT2 receptors, there's, there's satiety single signals. And once you become metabolically healthy, you can gain fat mass without um, uh, insulin. In fact, we have a lot of women and it, unfortunately it discriminates that they come into our office and uh, they want to go on this great ketogenic diet and we measure their markers and they tend to be more insulin sensitive and healthy. So insulin to our glucose, fasting glucose, lipid profiles, inflammatory markers, they're all good. But what we find is they have a lot of healthy subcutaneous fat and mm -hmm. they've gained that fat mass through non-insulin pathways. Mm -hmm. And so they can eat as much fat as they want and they're going to measure ketones in their blood, in their urine, in their pee, but they're not going to lose weight. Right. And so we want the ketones to come from fat loss and the, the diet will look different in different people. Now, the majority of the population, again, really have an insulin problem, insulin resistance, yeah. hyperinsulinemia, metabolic syndrome. And that's why the low carb, high fat diet is really good advice for the majority of people. Right. Uh, but that's so true because I often will say to people, you, and the, what, the, the Atkins and keto diet, what I, you can't eat all you want and still lose weight. Okay, that's the main difference. And then the keto versus Atkins, many people will say, oh, that's the high protein. It's not high protein. It's high fat, moderate protein. And that's, that's you know, the yeah, big difference. Yeah, well, I think keto, just to get back to the question, yeah. ke uh, ketogenic diet People, it's, it's more sustained where you're eating maybe more high fat than mm -hmm. say where Atkins was originally at. He had kind of phases mm -hmm. and the quality of food was perhaps an issue in the Atkins diet. Although, look, for many people, the Atkins approach oh. still helps. I mean, that's how I lost. Absolutely. I, I, have, but, look, I have this one here. This is what the, Dr. Westman had revised. So yeah. this is the newer, you know, and he revised yeah. it and... Uh, you know, it's an easy to follow guide as well. It's different, you know, as far as content uh, than eat rich, live long, but it's, it's an, it's a guide. Um, when, so again, yeah. With, with, you know, at the end of the day, the quantity of the food, whether it's keto or Atkins, it, it really does matter. Mm -hmm. And so if you're diabetic, the, the benefit is just, um, number one, it reverses insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So it's like the fats, the fat cells are trapping energy when you're insulin resistant. And as soon as you reverse it with a low carb diet, you get your insulin levels down and the, 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 the fat energy comes pouring out, you lose weight. And with time you become more metabolically healthy and you can't eat the way that you were eating when you started this. I mean, naturally it's going to control appetite and then you're going to eat less. Right. And so that's like kind of it's 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 on autopilot but for a lot of other people down the road you have to think also think about the quantity of the food yes because you want the ketones to come from your body fat not the fat you're taking in from the food exactly that's basically where it is right yeah. um okay so in a healthy person low carb can cause kidney damage yeah so a, another myth Okay. So some people, <laughs> yeah, that's a myth. <laughs> so, um, you know, the fact that a high protein diet is bad for your um, kidneys, there's really no scientific evidence. I mean, it was just some, someone noted association a long time ago. And, you know, unless you have um, kidney failure, right? you know, that's and your creatinine's like three, mm -hmm. your GFR is like 30. Then you have to watch the... Then you have to watch but your protein. But a healthy person, yeah. an otherwise healthy person, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. And then last myth, this is just another junk science trend and it's going to fade away. Well, look, I was on uh, our local news debating that with um, a, a wonderful uh, bariatric surgeon in town. And he had this 
just he came out and said it's just another fad diet. But look, when you look, when you, you think about um, from an evolutionary perspective, um, being ketogenic is just a, a natural state. And, you know, jumping forward in time, um, William Banting mm -hmm. um, from um, England way back in the 19th century wrote his book on corpulence and the medical textbooks in the 19th and 20th century um, talked about losing weight by cutting out bread and potato. And then we had um, another um, uh, um, Jocelyn, researcher. Even. What? Jocelyn, who, where the Jocelyn, Jocelyn Diabetes Center is named after the original diet recommendation was to eat a, the carbs. Yeah, to cut the carbs. Yes. Yeah, I think Alfred Pennington and then Atkins came along mm -hmm. and then the paleo came along. Right. And so, um, you know, I just want to redefine healthy nutrition at this mm -hmm. point rather than put labels on it. And again, find some common ground that yeah. we can all agree upon. I think that is perfect. You know, yeah. that's what we want. Just overall health, a healthy way of eating. And each person can mod modify it to their own specific well, liking, you know, um, what kind of foods yeah. they like within those macronutrient, um, you know, boundaries, I guess. Okay, so one, okay, this is the last question. So in your opinion, what is the maximum amount of carbohydrates that somebody can eat in a day and still benefit or gain, get the benefits of a low carb lifestyle? You know, what's the, what's the cutoff for low carb versus not? Sure. So, and, you know, we, we've always put a, an upper uh, limit as, uh, of 120 grams of high quality carbohydrates mm -hmm. um, as, as, as the maximum per day. Mm -hmm. um, and so we could consider that low carb compared to, you know, standard American diets where you're eating 300, 400 grams of carbs right. a day. 80 grams of carb is more, more low carb. I think if, if you're trying to achieve some goals, the 120 might be for a healthy, metabolically sensitive, insulin sensitive individual. 80 grams if you're looking at low carb, under 40 if you are interested in keto. In keto. Perfect. That's great. So everybody out there watching, the questions that, you know, I know I've been getting, how many carbs? So Dr. Gerber's recommendation, 120 if you're metabolically healthy, 80 or below if you want to lose some weight, and then if you're really trying to get into keto lifestyle, it's 40 or less. So, um, and then finally, finally, what is your favorite recipe from the book, Eat Rich, Live Long, one of Dr. Uh, Chef Ryan's recipes. And have you seen his new book? He sent this to me. Look at how ton of recipes in here. It's huge. Sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we, we have a copy of Boundless. Mm -hmm. So first to say we met Chef Ryan at our uh, Breckenridge conference um, two years ago. And... Um, he uh, actually prepares meals for us when we go to the conferences. Hopefully nice. coming up here next year in March, we can get uh, Ryan to help out with that. But um, this might throw you, but my favorite recipe is the liver. Really? Okay. And yeah. And so I actually insisted that I think organ meat has a lot of health benefits. It's, it's animal based um, nutrient dense. It's probably the, the, the most nutrient dense food in the world to eat. Yeah. So that's kind of a dairy food for some people, but um, um, I do enjoy that. But my second best is the uh, keto pizza. Ryan uses a lot of um, ch cheese and dairy, and the crust is just um, to die for. And um, it's I did quite, make uh, that. Filling. I made the pastry crust, and I made cinnamon yeah. rolls out of it. And Ryan, if you're watching, Excellent. it was great. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to revisit liver. The last time I think my I, I had it, my mom made it for me. I, I think I was four or five years old. That was it. Right, well, I, I grew up eating it. Yeah. I, there's different ways to prepare it. Mm -hmm. Ryan has a good recipe. Um, you can make uh, liverwurst or Braunschweiger, mm -hmm. which is liver pate. Yeah. A little more palatable. Um, I think calf liver. Um, I mean, there's chicken livers and 
you know, I, Dr. Gerber, I grew up in New Jersey in an Italian family. We had, I mean, they eat organ meats, you know, that culture in a lot of different ways as well. And uh, my, uh, my grandmother she called them gizzards. And I remember being a kid, you used to go up to the stove when she was cooking, asking for the gizzards because they tasted good. So sure. it's just the stigma of ooh, eating organ meats, you know. And, and I grew up in Philadelphia, by the way. Oh, okay. Are you, are you south or north Jersey? Uh, Central. Central Jersey. Central Jersey, yes. Excellent. New so. Brunswick, yeah. Yep, I went to Rutgers undergrad. There so. you go. Yep. Anyway, um, I really want to thank you for – joining me on this live and um, you know, to let everybody out there know that and I, I said this when I spoke with, with Ivor Cummins, this is one, the best explanation of what happens to your body, to the fat when you're metabolizing and, and, and really shows you why you shouldn't be afraid of a high fat diet. The trouble you run into is when you mix the high fat carb. So, that's what you want to stay away from. But I just wanted to thank Dr. Gerber. And if anyone has questions, to you know, message me later. And um, if anyone has a specific question for Dr. Gerber that you really want to have answered, um, you know, maybe he'll he'll let us uh, send him a message and throw out an answer. But otherwise, I hope you have a great weekend. And um, thanks for tuning in. Bye, Dr. Gerber. Bye. And the meeting, there we go.